Greetings, sorry. Welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me. Call me unawares there having a bit of coffee. <clears throat> I think I pressed the start for the record a bit sooner than I intended to. Anyway, welcome back everybody. You are most welcome as always. A very quick one today. Um, basically, as you probably got the uh, impression from the title, just a quick update on this uh, border model 132nd scale Avro Lancaster B1 bomber the former Wingnut Wings kit. Uh, all it is really. Um, a lot of you seem to have enjoyed the video I shot uh, two weeks ago I think it was. Uh, early last week maybe. And um, there has been a little bit of an update from Border with some more photographs uh, of the sprues and I have to say they're quite impressive. Now since I shot the main video, uh, if you saw any of the other intervening videos um, on the, the Panzer II or the Fokker Wolf 190 you'll have seen that I was talking about this in that as much as that we have now had it officially confirmed in the UK at least that the UK recommended retail price is going to be £699.99 <laughs> I need something stronger than coffee actually when I heard that news but anyway it's a huge amount of money um, I don't agree with that I think that that is just crazy we have to we have to qualify our opinions I think all of us it hasn't come out yet, we haven't seen the finished product. We know, I mean, what I'm going to show you in these photos, which should just be a few, a quick flick through them. There's nothing new here uh, from what any of us have seen, those of us that saw it at Scale Model World or elsewhere in 2018 and 2019. Um, and there's just a point I should make actually, which is something I didn't make in the original video, which I overlooked. Very important actually. In 2018, when this first appeared and the announcement was first made they were going to do this project, at Telford Scale Model World. They also presented the nose section, which of course Hong Kong model have sort of emulated and brought out themselves. Um, but the interesting thing is, I'll show you the photograph in a second, but the interesting thing is that they didn't bring that nose section to 2019, the following year. It wasn't on the stand and it, it's got me really scratching my head. I thought, does that mean that they didn't intend to go ahead with that and did they even they obviously didn't sell Hong Kong models the rights or the moulds because it's different, it hasn't got the canning effect on the metal panels. So it, it couldn't, it must be a coincidence or perhaps Hong Kong model got wind of the fact that they weren't going to go for it and they thought oh, we will, um, which is perfectly fine, you know. But it's just interesting, I, I wonder if anybody else has heard or got any more knowledge about this or if there's any more news coming out that I haven't heard yet about the nose section, cockpit nose section because as I say, um, Wing at Wings showed it at 2018 and it wasn't there on, on the stand in 2019. I'll show you that picture now actually without further ado. If I can just find it. Because I actually put it in this collection even though it's not part of the new. Here it is, here it is. So that is my own photograph. I'll zoom you in so you can see this really well. That's my own photograph of the nose section. This is November 2018 on the Wing at Wings stand. And as you can see, it is pretty damn fine uh, yeah and it includes obviously the forward part of the bomb bay as well which is interesting and then this just never appeared the following year when they came uh, you know again the second year and they were saying it's coming next year but this was not on that stand that second year which is really odd anyway without further ado I'm not going to sit here bab babbling away because I want to make a nice quick one for you to watch quickly I'm just going to flick through these photographs. So you're going to see a couple of photographs that we saw already and, and several that are brand new just come out in the last, I think, 24 hours. So these are the ones you saw. These shots are now from 2019. And you can see what I mean if you look around the background. You won't see that nose section anyway. It's not there. It wasn't present. So it's as though they changed their mind, decided to drop it. So yeah, we saw these pictures last week. So I'll, I'll glide through these. Now we have the new photo. So this is the proposed border kit. This is them showing the canning effect, stre stressed skin effect on the wing, uh, the top wing in this case. Bit of a close up there of the. That's the same piece actually, isn't it? It's just a bit of a close up of it. Very impressive. You see all the hatch details, some of the very fine riveting, the big rivets, small rivets. Really, really nice. Certainly impressive. Um, one thing that slightly worries me is this. Just, just have a look at this photograph, photograph closely. Look at the bottom, look at the actual sprue itself. Look at the flash. 
Now I'm not I'm not criticising the the actual <laughs> sprue itself, but you never saw flash like that on wing wings kits, which is again making me worry that this is going to end up being like the main situation, where frankly we end up with a, a product that's not as good as we thought it was going to be. But anyway, we'll reserve judgment till we see it properly. This is the um, some of the internal detail on the uh, the sides of the cockpit and the the sides of the crew cabin. With you've got um, a lot of wiring here, some incredible detail there with the wiring. Uh, you've got a bulkhead here. Uh, you've got the floor here. Looks absolutely amazing that wiring detail. I'm going to zoom in a bit more so you can see it better. That looks pretty impressive, to be honest. So there's no faulting. There's no fault in the moulds, but we know the moulds are going to be good. It's just whether they actually deliver. You know, pristine quality to go with it, or whether we end up with it a flashy, or you know, be a good mould, a good sprue, but then let down by its instructions, which is what I suspect will happen. I really hope I'm wrong. I hope I get proved wrong on this, but I've not got a good feeling about it. <laughs> but we shall see. We shall reserve judgment. Look at this. So this is the um, what's that? Is that the side of the wing root? Yes, it's the wing root area, I think, isn't it? Look at the canning, look at these distressed skin effect. That is just fantastic, isn't it? Just see me out a bit, because there's a little bit of wheel just missing there. You see a bit of the wheel? That's quite impressive. And then we've got the forward um, fuselage. Again, you can see the canning effect, the distressed stressed skin. Really, really good. Very, very nice. I mean, there's no doubt that the moulds, you know, the moulds are fantastic. For me, that's not the question about this kit. The question is about the price and what sort of effort they make with the instructions. Here we have the instruments, and they really look great, I've got to say, in fairness. They look superb. Look at that. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Look at the levers, yeah? Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Looking pretty good. Now, this is um, a point that I think is a bit controversial with some people. Some people are not happy with the idea that they are moulding the seat belts onto the seat rather than having it where you can arrange it yourself in your own way and do it with PE. A bit surprised about this, if I'm honest. Um, but wing nut wings weren't big, big enough, you know, they did have some photo etch, but they weren't big into it, were they? Um, nevertheless, it looks, it looks impressive. You know, the moulding is beautiful. You've never seen a moulded seat belt looking as good as that, I would suggest. If I'm wrong, let me know. I'll get the kit. <laughs> now here's the underside of the wing, and again you can see the beautiful detail, just as good as on the top. You've got, again, all these different sizes of rivets. You've got the little hatches, um, access panels, etc. Looks really, really nice. A bit closer for you, that looks really nice, doesn't it? Can't fault that really. And then we've got some more of this astonishing internal detail on the uh, internal uh, crew compartment walls with uh, looks like a, some sort of generator. It might be radio equipment. Um, some fantastic wiring detail. I mean, again, that's. I, I would have preferred that if it had been a separate part, actually, that you then attach yourself because. Painting this is going to be a little bit tricky, isn't it? But I'm not, I'm not knocking it. But as an example of injection moulding, that is pretty, pretty impressive. I'd say, yeah, wow. A bit more here. Uh, you've got this bulkhead, and moving onto the, the sort of further back down the plane, and you've got the sort of panelling over the structure with the wiring. You can clearly see that the wiring is beneath. <laughs> Which I like. That's that's very well done, isn't it? You can it gives you that three dimensional feel to it all. Very realistic. Yeah, it's quite a quite a thing. Now they've also announced in the last seven days that um, since the initial news came out, they're going to have what they call copper. I'm sure they mean brass. They look like brass to me rather than copper. I think they're brass turned uh, aero scale. I think have actually produced these. Um, they're, they're the Browning 303 machine guns and they do look 
damn fine, don't they? I mean, you, at that scale, I don't think plastic is going to cut it. So, um, yes, I think that's a great thing. So that there is going to be some extra sort of included. Uh, same at the front. Browning 303s in brass. Makes them look really real. Just gives it that three-dimensional impression, doesn't it? And then there's a couple of shots, which we've kind of seen before from my own photographs and other people's um, of the original Wing at Wings effort uh, when it was at Telford. We saw all this. Um, it does look a bit more finished in this shot. I'm not, I, can't, I can't decide if that's actually 3D rendering or if it's actually a, a mock-up of the actual kit that they've actually made from the sprues. I think it might be the latter, but it's quite a bit hard to tell. And then you've seen it from above. So this, this time you see the crew compartment uh, with the pilot seat. Uh, navigator, radio, radio operator, etc. Uh, engineer, radio operator, bombing, etc. The list goes on in length, doesn't it? And then there's this shot where you can see one side showing its structure without the top skin of the wing on on the port on the uh, starboard side, which is a, gives you a good in, impression of of the finished kit. Now, I think the thing to draw from this photograph is. Uh, that's very interesting and we should focus on. Look at the fact that there are four engines. Now, I'm just going to zoom out again for a second. Now, this is uh, noteworthy because Wing at Wings uh, originally intended only to give you one engine and the rest you close up, you could choose where you wanted to put it. This does give the impression that maybe Border are going to go with four engines. Maybe this is where some of the difficulties have come for them in terms of the tooling and the moulds because they wanted to upscale and, ha and have additional moulds with the extra engines on. Don't quote me on this, but it looks that way, doesn't it? That's that's the impression I'm getting. Quite interesting. Anyway, we'll go back in. That could account for the extra price that they're wanting to charge. Um, kind of makes sense, wouldn't it? And then there's the rear shot, which does look incredible, doesn't it? Look at the, uh, the stress skin effect. You can really see it on the wings there. Look at that. Oh, wow, I mean that is really really impressive. Uh, quite unlike the Hong Kong model version, obviously. And then there's this shot of underneath and you've got a, a cookie bomb in the bomb bay there. Which is, uh, shows it as a, without the outer fuselage on, it gives it again a good impression of the structure of the kit, how it replicates the bulkheads, etc., and the bomb bay. Very impressive. And again, you can clearly see there are four engines shown there. I zoom out, you can. Four engines, not one. So I'm getting the feeling that, that Border are including all four. And that's a great shot, isn't it? It really does look the business when you see it like that, I have to say. And then we've got the cockpit uh, showing the instruments in, in situ, all the wiring that goes up behind the pilot's uh, seat, and the uh, the front gun turret without its glass on. Incredible! Look at the levers, throttle levers here. Wow! Absolutely incredible! Fantastic detail. And then the top turret. And again, this has got the the brass guns in place, three or threes. Very very nice. And that's it. So, quite um, quite impressive uh, images, I think. They are very impressive. Uh, more impressive than the price. Um, I'm not going to pontificate and go on about it, but my view is that that is way too much. Even if it's perfect, even if it was wing at wings, I think £700 is too much. Even it, all the excuses about Covid and shipping costs and all that. No, I'm sorry, £700 is disproportionate and, and it's like somebody needs to get a reality check. I mean, I could, I could buy it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to be doing this one, I'm afraid. I'll leave it to others. Um, I'm convinced that in time these prices will come down anyway. Uh, and I just think they're trying to grab their gold and get the money back as quickly as possible. And then they'll release them and it'll become more of a cash cow as time goes on. So I think that people that jump in at the beginning, if you're not going to build the model, if you're going to build it, I've got nothing to say about that. That's your choice. Everybody's entitled to make their own choices and... Uh, yeah, I think you'd have great, great, great fun with it, great time with it. But if you're buying it as any kind of investment or as a collector, I'd be very wary, very, very careful on this one. My gut feeling is that this will not appreciate in value. It might do initially for a few months, 
but over time it's not going to be an investment I think it will be seen to be overpriced uh, and I say we don't know what the instructions are going to be like yet we can't judge it we can't give a final judgment I can't you can't nobody can but my gut feeling is I wouldn't dive in and spend 700 on this thinking you're going to make a killing you might be able to in a, in a couple of weeks afterwards but you, you wouldn't want to hang on to it for too long because frankly I don't think you're going to have an investment I think it'll be loss making but we shall see we shall see um, I know that I know one or two people saying they're going to build it and hats off to you I think that that'll be fascinating to watch so good luck to you anyway hope you enjoyed the video it's only a quick one today um, just want to give you an update with the photos um, I know that these prices are banded around are oh, they are UK prices and I have them from very reliable sources but the prices in other territories are going to be different so uh, I think in America they were quoting $600, I think Andy's Hobby Headquarters and others were quoting that figure, which sounds a bargain to me. Yes, that's different. Mm, now I've been thinking about it more seriously at $600. Uh, if that's shipped, delivered, then that's a different matter. But £700 UK pounds is way too high. It's just absolutely ridiculous. But don't let me put you off the kit because it does look beautiful. I just, just wait with slight nervousness about the instructions because you know we've had the uh, the ME109 that they brought out which is a lovely kit a really nice kit I don't want to put anybody off it fantastic but the instructions didn't even give you a single call out for the painting of any of the components inside the aircraft the guns or the engine cockpit anything else nothing so I hope they realize that they need to give that data you know they need to look at a wing that wings typical instruction book it needs to have history, £700, it needs to have history, it needs to have technical data, it needs to have examples, showing fo photographs from the war, you know, showing it in service, showing details and colour photographs where appropriate, of battle damage and all that kind of thing. If they're just going to produce a, a bog standard model instruction booklet, I think it'd be very disappointing at that sort of price. But, I reserve judgement. Uh, we will wait further information and maybe they'll actually publish some photos of the instructions and then we can really get our teeth into that I mean I, I promise you I don't want them to fail I don't I want this to be a success but I am deeply shocked at the price I think it's I mean they said to me Wing that Wing said to me on the stand £425 now that was two years ago and it was a different world Wing that Wings have since gone out of existence but to be almost double now come on it's twice the price of the Hong Kong models kit uh, and I'm sure it's going to be superior to that, but I don't think it's going to be twice as good. I'm doubtful. And there's not twice as much plastic. No, I think we've got to take a reality check about what is sensible here. And uh, I think Border, if you're watching, have, a, have another think. Have another think about how, how you are going to be seen to be marketing this. Um, you haven't had to do the R&D. You haven't had to do the tooling. You haven't had to do three quarters of the job, frankly. All you have to do is acquire it. Appreciate it might have been expensive. Fully understand that, and I don't want to get into people's costs or anything like that, but be be sensible. By all means, recoup your investment. Want, want, want it to be a success. Desperately want it to be a success. Every modeler wants this to be a success. But I think they're going a bit OTT, and that's being polite. <laughs> anyway, see so what do you think? Tell me in the comments below. I'm all ears. Thank you for watching. Please give us a thumbs up. Please uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget if you have already, ding the notification bell for a quick early warning of any forthcoming videos that I do in the near future. And uh, until next time, thank you very much for joining me. And I uh, hope you all stay well, stay safe. Uh, thanks a lot and bye for now.